In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest dashboard UI kit we made for Adobe XD. Three years ago, we made a very popular kit that's still being used today. It's a little dated, so we thought we'd refresh it. Hi, I'm Peck, CEO founder of Impeccable, and we've been designing enterprise dashboards for companies like HP, Adobe, Google, and many more Silicon Valley tech companies. Today, we'll be taking a behind the scenes look at one of our design lounges. This is where our designers present work in progress and other designers give critique, give feedback. In this episode, our senior designer, Christy Lin, is going to be taking a look at the work in progress dashboard UI kit. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to her. So, this is the new dashboard, updated dashboard UI kit. Um, I just noticed the, the cool sticker sheet. It's really looking good. Um, so I think we just want to look at a few of the new Adobe features. And I did notice that, you know, one place that we are not using stacks yet that we could implement it while we're sort of here is um, on this sidebar menu. Um, so stacks is the, the new feature that lets you um, basically create a group of items that you can change the order of really quickly. Um, so like we're using them in a lot of places in here. So for instance, um, see how close I can zoom in. Here we have like a, a stack. I have to move this window. I can't see. Here we go. Um, so here we have a stack that's set in horizontal. So you can basically like change the order of items really quickly without having to reorganize your whole group. Um, so that's kind of what stacks are ideally meant for, um, but they can get really granular. So we also use stacks down here, for instance. Um, you can change around like maybe the order of the table if you want. Um, and if you, oops, if I select the actual item, you can move things around like this. And where we got sort of really granular about it is if you go into um, a particular element, I just wanna do uh, edit the main component, which is over here. So it's kind of, I'm going to actually just, actually, I can't really do that, can I? Well, what I wanted to show is if we wanted to change maybe the order of the bars as well, because these are all um, components or like uh, copies of a component, we can actually just change over here on the main component. We can do, because this is a stack of the two bars, we can actually just grab one of them and change the order of the bars as well. And that should update the order over here too. So it's kind of a cool um, way of working where now you can use components in a more powerful way. So it basically is uh, allowing you to edit the order of things on the fly. And um, by using you know, a component group, then you're able to edit a lot of items on the fly. Um, and Let's see, while we're here, another thing that we implemented with the dashboard kit is scroll groups. So a scroll group basically allows you to set an area where you're able to scroll within in your prototype. So for this one, we have it set for a horizontal scroll. And what we did is there's actually, I go into the whole group, you can see there's a whole other set of them over here that's sort of out of view of the scroll area. So when you play this, um, you can actually scroll back and forth as if it were like a, a real graph that you can go back in time on. So that was also implemented in like a lot of the other graphs as well. Maybe not quite finished, um, but that's sort of the, the scrolling feature and you can do scrolling um, in, multiple directions if you want. So we're just showing sort of a horizontal scroll, but you can also do um, a vertical scroll if you have a list, like I think we use it on this table here. So you can scroll up and down within a list of items as well. Um, and then it also has like a pan scroll where you can go in all directions. 
Um, so scrolling is pretty easy to set up. You just sort of select the area that you want to have the scrolling group. You select which direction you want it to go, and then you can move around which piece of it you want visible. So you can kind of like, you wanted it to be a shorter list, you could do something like this. And then when we play it, it's going to show in a shorter view, but we'll have more items to scroll through. So you can kind of play around with that too. Um, but it's really handy feature, um, especially if you're building like web apps or like desktop apps, it's really hard to show scrolling before. Um, and then I think the last good use of stacks, well, I'm thinking of it, is if you have like a tab group like this where maybe the items will change in size within them, you can actually combine um, stacking with padding. So this is a little bit of a weird way of doing it, but there's, if we go into it, let's see, it has a background on it, which is what the dark blue part is that you can see. Then it has the tabs and each one of these tabs is also a component. Um, so we can make a change to one of the components here and it's going to make a bunch of updates. So because it's in a stack, it's going to maintain the spacing that's in between the items. So like you can see that spacing that's in between them. Um, we just have it set for a really small one pixel, but it will maintain that one pixel between as I <laughs> there's so many different pieces of this also that I want to mention, like there's padding on the item itself. So the text inside of it has a padding around it for the, the sort of tab item. Then there's the space between, which is the stack. And then there is the background on it, which also has a padding attached to it that allows it to grow with the growing of the item. So like for here, um, I can change this to like, I don't know, years or I don't know, year, yearly. I want to make it something like kind of longer, like just some long thing. <laughs> and it's going to adjust the whole group. So I can, oops, we do. I want to just grab this guy and move it over. I could also make both of these a stack and then they would both move together. Um, so there's a lot of other things that you can do with it. Um, but it's kind of just a great way of, you know, not having to do a bunch of extra work and still being able to have, I don't know, a lot of flexibility. So that's pretty much how we're using stacks in here. As you can see, there's other stuff we can do to set it up. I'll just show you because um, this one isn't done yet anyway. So I was just look, taking a look at this. So the sidebar itself is a whole group, but it has the background in it and it also has all the items. And then this notification thing is sort of attached to the inbox, but it's not really attached to it. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the inbox item and the notification item and group those together so that those are just one item. Um, and then what I can do is I wanna grab each one of these and I'm just going to group all of them together. So I'm going to call these like maybe menu items or something. So in order to create the stack, you have to group it all into a single group. And then what I'll do is just turn on the stack for that group that I just created. I do want it to be a vertical stack. And now all of the items that are in there are going to be in the order that they're listed here. So there's like, um, you can edit it by doing this and you can see it's going to update in the sidebar also, or you can change the order in the sidebar and it's going to change the order over here. So that's going to be a direct match for however you want these to be um, ordered. And now they're using stacks so we can have like a little bit of extra flexibility if we want to do more space between them maybe. Um, we kind of have a, a lot more options now. And so that's implementing stacks and using stacks and how they're used sort of throughout the new, the dashboard kit. And Vu did a great job um, getting this together for us. If you like what you're seeing so far, please smash the like button and leave us a comment on what you'd like to see in further episodes. And then the other thing we did with uh, states, because again, um, the goal for this dashboard UI kit was to leverage those new Adobe XD features as much as possible. So we tried to be really, really picky and find all the different circumstances we could use it.
Christy mm-hmm. Lynn did a great job of ident- identifying uh, more ideas. Um, I think if you like the percent, the delta in the um, widgets the, over here. Yeah. So those should also have um, a different state where you can actually change it to up or down as the second as a different state. Okay. Yeah. So, so we made that. Um, oh, this is this one. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So little things like that, just to um, show other designers who might not be familiar with uh, the new Adobe XD features, like how, you know, how much you could actually use it and how much it could actually save um, their workflow. So, um, yeah, it's really great. Um, the other thing we didn't really, we don't really have a way. Well, maybe we could, no, we can't. There's not really a good place to demo it here, but another good use for stacks is like, if you do have an information card like this, if like the text that is in here, if you expect it to potentially grow to another line, it can also be really helpful. Like in the notes kit, we use it a lot because if the content of like your little preview on the note grows, it can push down the content that's below it. So like if you have this group here, if this is set as a stack and this gets longer and it goes to another line, it will push this line down. Or same like if this one gets longer, it will push the other two down and maintain the space between those items. So it's another really great way of using like, if you're making cards in your design, I I like using stacks for that just so that I know if the content grows, it's not going to affect the other items in the, the stack. So really helpful great and um, I think one other thing um, here in the in the card component I think the actual little graph itself is also another component so you can Mm -hmm. actually change the graph in there so yeah there's there should be a lot of little um, nuggets or what's the word people use um Easter eggs. <laughs> Easter eggs. I was like eggs, but yeah, <laughs> Easter eggs, kind of. <laughs> right. I was uh, also thinking about this one. We could play around with this if we wanted to show a drop down, and right. we did like some cool ones with um, scroll groups inside on the notes UI kit for like if you want to change the font size, for instance. Like it's fake, obviously, but mm-hmm. you can like scroll through a list of font sizes in this little tiny panel. So there's a lot of like little micro uses for it that I think are really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I think we did a great job. Um, we could definitely do more. And I wonder if we could, you know, con- you know update it again later. And so, yeah. No, but um, yeah, I think the other thing was, um, you know, as we start using these, all these features more and more. Um, I think one thing we'll think about is um, what we might want, you know, what's a good standard or best practice that we can all follow so that when designers work together, um, we can kind of be understood that, okay, we'll use uh, stacks for lists or make, you know, list scroll groups and things like that, just so it's collaboration is a little easier. So that's kind of the next step of what we'll be working on. And then we'll also um, share those um, with the, team, the rest of the team. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to be notified of any future videos, please hit the notification bell. Thank you.